This is a quick and straightforward piece inspired by a Reddit post from about a week ago. The Reddit post was itself a response to a video where a YouTuber claimed to be lowering temperatures and boosting performance on Ryzen 3000 CPUs by lowering the vCore value in BIOS. We never did catch that video, as it has since been retracted and followed up by the creator and the community with new information. Even though the original content was too good to be true, it was still based on a completely valid idea. Lowering voltage, 50% of the equation for power, will theoretically reduce thermals and power load. The content ended up indirectly demonstrating some unique AMD Ryzen 3000 behaviors that we thought would be worth testing ourselves. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to know when undervolting is working versus not working. We'll talk about gains and losses and get some hard numbers for the master and the godlike motherboards and how AMD Ryzen behaves with regard to clock stretching. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the GN Store. The best way to support our independent reporting is through store.gamersnexus.net. Viewers like you allowed us to recently switch to paying for all of our own flights to product launch events rather than accepting flights from companies. This is made possible with your purchases of merch like our GN Media Mod Mat in stock and shipping now and designed with GPU teardown diagrams and grids. Our 100% custom made two-tone shirt is also a great way to help and it's currently on sale. The shirt uses 95% cotton and 5% elastin for a sporty fit with vibrant colors and was designed entirely by the GN team. Learn more at the link in the description below or go to store.gamersnexus.net. To paraphrase Reddit user Boxman90's post, which was in response to the original content and a pretty well explained post, lowering vCore a little bit without being in OC mode, locking the clocks, locking the voltage and overriding everything, will cause the requested voltage per core, the VID, to increase. So this is where it gets kind of interesting. The response is that with VID rising, you end up with a result that's nearly the same, but lowering vCore a lot will, like down to one volt, will initiate clock stretching. And the end result is that monitoring software will report normal clocks. So it'll look like it's fine and it'll look like it's stable at the new voltage. But in reality, the performance will reflect that things are worse. And it's just, it's similar in GPU overclocking, especially with AMD GPUs, if you're using, well, any tool these days, uh, where it looks like things are getting better with regard especially to voltage numbers or in the case of GPU overclocking, frequency numbers. But until you validate with performance, it's not necessarily a number you can believe. And this doesn't mean that anyone who, uh, who does go through undervolting processes or overclocking on GPUs uh, is doing anything wrong by instantiating worse performance but thinking it's better it just means that there's this really interesting characteristic of the new hardware and the way the software interacts with it and reports on it where you just you can't trust anything anymore until you run some kind of validation test and so for gpu overclocking we use 3d mark to validate that the score is actually going up when the frequency says it's going up and with cpus you can use something like cinebench to run through it pretty quickly so ultimately it's up to amd to explain what their cpus do and why they do those things what we're attempting to do in this piece is replicate the behavior that was seen originally and then see if we can find a way to undervolt effectively, actually have the, the benefit that everyone wants to have when they're undervolting. We ran the 3600 and the 3900X for this piece. We used two motherboards, the master and the godlike. So we've got Gigabyte and MSI both represented here for some different BIOSes. And we ran Cinebench R20 multiple times, three times for multi-threaded. Uh, and then we also ran sing single-threaded passes with Cinebench R20. Note, again, R20, not R15, so the numbers are not comparable between the two. And then uh, additionally, we did this stock. We set for a second test one volt in BIOS. We also did uh, voltage offsets with a negative offset for things like, uh, for example, minus 0.05 volts to see if we could undervolt it successfully. And then we also ran Blender and log the frequency, but today we're gonna focus on the Cinebench numbers because it's plenty for now and it tells the story just fine and we're all tired and none of us have rested yet. So we controlled vCore in the test that called for it. We applied XMP. Uh, we did our custom timings we do for all of our CPU reviews these days. And we applied the DRAM voltages as necessary. We also maxed out the fan speeds as we always do, pump speeds, all that stuff. And we kept the ambient temperatures and cooling as constant as reasonable. Uh, plus or minus about one degree Celsius for the ambient temperature from a 21 baseline. Otherwise, we use the motherboard auto settings for both of the boards. Uh, so that means no LLC overrides, nothing like that to flatten out the voltage, and the boards will behave differently based on how the manufacturers configured them. So 
All of that aside, let's go through the numbers. Here's our first two charts. We'll just take turns putting them on the screen. In multi-threaded and single-threaded results for the R5-3600, it's immediately obvious that applying one volt V core tanked the performance. The system boots fine, and it doesn't show any signs of instability. But on both motherboards, there was a very real decrease in performance. At stock, the godlike performed slightly better than the master, and the best undervolt offset we could manage didn't significantly change either board's score. 1.0 is a ridiculously low voltage to run for Ryzen 3000 CPUs, but both boards and both CPUs allowed us to set and boot at this voltage. At least, it looks like that. So now we've established the truth, which is that setting a V-Core this low will in fact degrade performance. Even if that degradation doesn't come in a form as obvious as a typical blue screen, it does happen. So this is that unique behavior we were talking about, where traditionally you set a voltage too low and there's a pretty simple outcome. It blue screens, it doesn't boot, you get a black screen, something that's extremely obvious that it hasn't worked. So it would be easy to get excited about this result and uh, we did too when we first started doing this testing, but of course, by the time we had started, we already knew what the outcome would be. So that's why we also tested voltage offset, shown in the next chart, pushing an offset lower than minus 0.05 on the X570 Master actually did cause instability and boot problems. This was encouraging because it meant that we were hitting real limits rather than fooling ourselves by setting an unrealistically low manual V-Core. So there was a chance it might actually help performance with that offset. It didn't on the 3600, but the 3900X was a different story. The 3900X, like the 3600, performed much worse than stock with a V-Core set to one volt. The master actually outperformed the godlike board here at stock as opposed to the test with the 3600. So the trend of Ryzen 3000 related test variants continues. The most interesting part of these results, however, are the scores with a negative voltage offset. The godlike board was stable with an offset as low as minus 0.1 volt using the 3900X, and it gained 2% over the stock multi-threaded score. It's not a huge leap, but it's a real improvement, and the same behavior was shown on the X570 Master. Single-threaded scores were largely unaffected and actually decreased slightly on the godlike board with the voltage offset. So the minus 0.05 offset for the 3900X on the master is the best combination we've tried. There's an unholy number of charts that we could generate from the data we've gathered, so we'll just focus on the MSI godlike board for most of this piece, just because the graphs for it are a little easier to read and they all tell the same story. These next charts are all frequency plots. We've also zoomed the frequency charts to a 2000 megahertz range in order to make the differences more obvious. So we have intentionally set a non-zero axis here. This first one shows the R5-3600 on the godlike at one volt stock and at minus 0.05 volts offset. From just these numbers, it would appear that the one volt V core are the best numbers as the R5-3600 held a constant 4.2 gigahertz throughout the three multi-threaded passes, as well as the long single-threaded passes. The next chart shows the same type of data, except that the R9-3900X is used instead. On the 3900X, clocks were less consistent, but still reported holding higher clocks than stock, with a reported 4225 during the multi-threaded tests. In the single-threaded tests, it logged boosts to 4.5 gigahertz and beyond, but the stock results won out here with a fairly consistent 4575 megahertz for most of the single-threaded test. It's clear that the one volt V-Core result isn't actually performing better on either CPU, even though it kind of sounds like it might be. This is uh, simply shown by a rough comparison of how much longer the test took com to complete, which you can see by looking at this chart where the line takes longer, or by looking at our earlier scores. These next two charts show V-Core as logged by Hardware Info. It's admittedly not the best way to do things. It'd be better to measure an MLCC cap or something like that, but this is good enough. The one volt BIOS setting works according to software logging, although the next batch of charts might contradict that. At the very least, this proves that BIOS as an option is doing something, even if the end result isn't what we want, which is lower performance here as uh, an unwanted byproduct. Stock V core for the 3600 shown here in this chart was reported at about 1.39 volts under all core load or about 1.344 volts with a negative offset applied. Both fluctuated between 1.38 and 1.4 volts in single threaded tests. The 3900X showed the inverse and we can pop that one up too. The stock and offset results both managed to stick to about 1.27 volts in the all-core load, and the gap showed itself instead in the single-threaded pass with stock V-Core hitting 1.47 to 1.48, and the offset voltage holding at 1.39.
These charts show VID instead. That's the next one. The average core VID numbers stack up differently than the reported V-core. It's the 3600 set to 1 volt that requires the highest voltages during the multi-threaded test at about 1.4 versus 1.36 to 1.37 stock and offset. Moving into the single-threaded test has the offset results averaging the highest VID. With the 3900X chart, there's a more clear division during the multi-threaded test with the stock uh, the lowest at 1.23 volts, then the offset at 1.32, then the 1 volt result at 1.34 to 1.35. Single threaded testing pushed them closer together with all the results landing in the 1.47 to 1.49 range. As mentioned earlier, we've chosen not to include the results we've gathered on the X570 masterboard, but they back up these results that we've seen on the godlike so far. For our final charts, we've stuck some results from boards together because the point is simple. T die the temperature of the die, is vastly lower on both the R53600 and the R93900X with V-Core set to 1 volt, and as the previous charts have shown, clocks are uh, higher. But that doesn't mean the performance is better. Much like GPU overclocking must be validated with performance tests, CPU volt frequency changes, at least with these CPUs, have to be validated with performance. A lot of the time, in the past, and also with most of the Intel processors, it's pretty easy to just see if it blue screens or not, and that's your validation of if it worked, but it's not so easy this time. It's very easy to trick yourself into thinking that all the numbers are better, but actually sacrifice performance by accident. The only other notables are the 3600 with a minus 0.05 volt offset on the X570 Master, which was slightly cooler than the stock setting in multi-threaded testing with an extremely small bump to its average score. The 3900X with a 0.1 volt offset on the MSI Godlike uh, ended up much cooler than stock and single-threaded testing, but with minor performance degradation. So our conclusion is that, yes, obviously, there's a pretty easily reproducible bug, we suppose. AMD might call it a feature, but uh, where setting vCore too low on the Ryzen 3000 CPUs will cause a significant decrease in performance, while hardware info appears to report better everything, better, at least better clocks and temperatures. And this all does make logical sense. There's every reason that, I mean, you lower the voltage, of course the temperature is going to go down. You lower the voltage, of course the power consumption should go down. And the frequencies should stabilize on these new CPUs because they're so bound by temperature, as we demonstrated in our LN2 uh, positive 84 to minus 80 or so degree testing. So everything here is logical. It's just that once you actually test it, the scoring is it does not match what you would want it to. It, it's worse in most cases. So what we also saw is it's possible to tweak the voltage down on our 3900X anyway for lower voltages than what you might run otherwise. You can get some minor benefits in score and temperature, which causes the score benefit, things like that. Uh, we were also able to run, as we showed in our original review, a higher all-core clock of about 4.3 gigahertz at just 1.34 to 1.35 volts, which is really pretty damn good. So. It's going to depend CPU to CPU. This testing obviously doesn't show you every CPU, and then they're each going to have their own unique characteristics per unit, not just per model or SKU. So when leaving everything else stock, setting a small negative vCore offset seemed like it helped more and yielded more predictable behavior than just setting a straight flat vCore number, a manual vCore override. Uh, the benefits varied by CPU, by motherboard, and by workload, but uh, in the very least, it was an interesting item to follow up on. We had a lot of you asking about it, We've been completely buried the last few days and haven't had a chance to uh, look over any other content. So we appreciate you giving us a heads up because at this point, the viewers are like our boots on the ground because we're completely buried and stuff to do. But um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's a valid idea and there is a way to kind of get undervolting to work, but just make sure you validate each time. And like we said earlier, this, you know, it's very easy to end up in a situation where things look like they improved. So there's absolutely no, uh, no harm in ending up in that situation. And we will give a, a quick shout to, I believe it was Optimum Tech. We didn't get to catch the original video. We only heard about the content, but uh, you know, huge kudos as always for following up quickly and posting the new information. There's absolutely no shame with new hardware to discover something that you think is, is, is good and then actually it didn't work out the way you thought it did because this stuff's new. And uh, spoiler alert, CPUs are extremely complex. So uh, it's cool. It's cool to see the whole community poking at these things with 
sticks and throwing rocks at them and seeing what happens because that's what we have to do to understand a new CPU at this point. They're very complicated these days, especially as they begin to adopt more and more GPU-like behaviors. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We'll see you all next time.